Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, The Young and the Selfish. The Young and the Selfish. Sometimes people realize, once they get to be older in life, that they wasted a lot of time. A lot of time doing all sorts of things that had nothing to do with the fruits of the Spirit. They weren't the least bit interested in nourishing their spiritual life, their spiritual side. They weren't trying to come up higher mentally other than to, of course, gain more knowledge, but not wisdom. So you have some folks that tend to act a bit odd around children. They act this way for any number of reasons, but this oddness, children are very discerning at times and pick up on when a stranger is dangerous. They pick up on when adults don't really like them that much. They know when they're in trouble with an older person. They have this ability to see that some folks who should be friend are really foes, okay? Now, how does this look over time as a child becomes more and more knowledgeable about people, about experiences, what suffering looks like? Well, depending on the child's mindset, they might fall by the wayside and end up trying to medicate a lot of their issues that adults had put upon them during their youth with drugs and alcohol and sex and rock and roll and whatever else they can find just to escape the pain. People who they were supposed to trust violated them in some way, whether it was their trust, their bodies, their minds, but somewhere along the line there were Adults who did much wrong to some of these suffering children who eventually become adults themselves and may recruit a few or many to become problems to end up being future pedophiles, future drunks, alcoholics, folks with some type of mental disorder. And you know the rest, because chances are you went through something and it put your mind and your body and so many other things to test. Why does God allow this sort of thing to happen? Some will say, well, it's because he wants to give us a taste of what it's like when things are so good to strengthen us to draw us near to him some folks will say but that's just wrong i mean you know isn't there other ways to get folks to draw near to god besides having pain and suffering and sadness and all of this Of course, but some of us are some tough nuts to crack, right? Some of us are hard, we're cold. We were born out of families that weren't very nice. Sometimes the only way people will come to the Lord is through pain. Because think of it this way, when you sit down and you talk to someone, And you have a reasonable tone about your voice and you're just advising them on some things that they're doing that's wrong. Do they usually just jump up and do what you say? (laughs) Do they typically start implementing all of what you've told them? Most of the time, no. Some folks got to learn things the hard way, like the child who walks over to the hot stove and says, but I just want to touch it, but it's hot. They don't know what hot is until they touch it, right? 
No, it's not a good thing to go through much, especially as a child who can't defend yourself in no way, shape, or form. You just got to take it. But God, even in all of our suffering, even in all of the difficulty, he figures out some kind of way that's customized just for us to get us to go ahead on and follow his will. It doesn't happen for everyone, of course, but for those who he has called, for those who he, have, who he has chosen, all of the pain and all of the suffering, well, it doesn't seem so bad as you get closer and closer to the Lord and finding out why things went the way they went. Which all of this brings me to the message, the young and the selfish. There's a lot of folks that are jealous of young people. They're older and they have a jealousy a hatred even toward young people because young people remind them of so much, so much they have gone through. Young people remind them of things that they should be doing, but they're not. Young people are at times not what they feel are a good representation of who they are, but why? Why even be concerned about that? Because, well, a young person is his or her own person. But for some adults, that's not the case. You're a representation of me. You are a mini me. You are going to do what I want you to do when I tell you to do it. So the child really doesn't have an identity that's exclusively his or her own. Now stay with me. I mean, it all interconnects. These messages, it seems like you're going down one path, but trust me, we're still on the same path when it comes to this young and the selfish. Spiritual messages don't always come out in black and white. We got to touch on the gray areas before it all makes sense. The young person is trying to find his or her way in life. The young person wants to put the past behind, wants to walk in the present, and anticipates the future. But that selfish individual, a person that may have 10, 15, 20, 30 some years, maybe even 40 years over that child, he or she, if they're not walking with the Lord, you know they're a child of light. And you know they have some hidden motives. They've got some wickedness going on with them. And they're just not right. Okay? They're just not right. And so the young person in the presence of a selfish, bitter, jealous, covetous, older person, somebody who they're supposed to respect, oh, it can be like oil and water. Why are you over here? What do you want from me? Why are you asking me those questions? Go over there. Do this. Do that. Stop saying this to me. Who are you? I don't even know you anymore. Just go away. You remind me of. Oh, it's even worse if that child looks like that parent that they're no longer with. Or that parent who they're with, but they just don't like them. You remind me of your mother. Stop. Just just go somewhere. Every time you make your face like that, oh, you put me in the mind of your father. Their emotions, their feelings. A child's way, a child's demeanor, their behaviors and so forth can be quite irritating. To those individuals who don't like children much, who don't particularly care for that other parent. And they see that face in the eyes of the child. God will put things upon our hearts to pray about. When we see that there's something troubling in the atmosphere concerning an adult and a child, 
Those things are not there for our entertainment. They're there for us to pray about. They're there to also strengthen that young person, even though we may feel like they're too young to go through so much. But we have to focus in on the future and what God is going to do in those circumstances to make that child stronger, hopefully, because some children never do get right. They never do end up being quality individuals because the pain was just too much to bear. And for those things, we just don't understand. We try. We want to talk to some folks and give them the peace. But sometimes there's just no, there's just no, nothing we can do. God has to be the one to change them, rearrange them from the inside out. These selfish individuals that are around the youth, we have to recognize them for who they are. And then that's when we got to go in overdrive if it is in our power to teach them right from wrong. Selfish grandmother, she's about making herself feel better. She's about making sure that people, places, and things around her are somewhat controlled by her. Selfish grandmother is not interested in doing anything to continue to help out the youth. No, she has a stopping point. She starts and then she finishes. And then she may not help again for another 5, 10, 15 plus years. We have to recognize that selfish uncle is going to be who he's going to be. He's more concerned about his women and his wine and less concerned about being anything more than that. So we don't have to bring selfish uncle around. Okay. He has a title. Yes, sometimes he's fun, but he's not teaching the children too much of anything. You see where I'm going with this? We've got to create a divide between the young and the selfish. Because as long as we're bridging the gap, so to speak, between the young and the wicked and the addicted and the touched and something else that's going on with them and we just can't figure it out. As long as we are creating those type of bonds with individuals, the children will think that it's acceptable. And then when they get older, they're going to get around some folks and say, well, it's okay. I mean, because I grew up this way. My mom, she was into some stuff. My, you know, uncles and aunts and so forth, they were drunks. And, you know, this is all familiar to me. And I'm used to, you know, a controlling relative or two because, well, I grew up in those atmospheres. And, you know, so why do we even ask the question, why do they pick the partners that they pick? How is it that they're able to get along with, you know, these uh, controlling managers and so forth? You know, why is it that they're able because they grew up around it and sometimes God allows them to go through it because later on in life, they're going to be the one that's going to sustain the abuse of a boss or the abuse of a fellow business partner or whatever that we're not going to be able to endure. Because we didn't grow up in those types of environments or we didn't experience some of the stuff that some of these others have experienced. So they're going to be able to suffer through things that we will never be able to suffer through because of all of the programming and the, you know, disappointments and the failures and the upset and, you know, watching people um, fall apart in front of them. They've got a tougher skin and we need some folks like this. Now I'm going to take you into some territory that you may not have thought about. But think about it this way. There are those people out here that God has specifically designed to deal with tasks that the majority of us cannot and will not deal with. Somebody got to be in the jails and somebody got to have a tough skin in order to deal with the inmates. Right. That child who went through so much, who was groomed in a way where we probably thought she was going to end up being a problem to society ends up being the one that's working in the correctional facilities and so forth. That child who went through so much dealing with some parents 
ends up growing up being a mother who has a bunch of foster children. There's a lot of folks that's not interested in that sort of, you know, uh, uh, um, activity. Okay. Oh, no, I'm not going to, you know, um, work for, you know, this organization dealing with foster children. No, I'm not going to bring any foster children into my care. Right. But God, he puts something in these people's minds and their bodies and their spirits that surpasses what we may have thought that that child was going to be destined to be. I remember an individual said to me, based on some things that he saw in a child, that he was going to end up being this and he was going to be that. And everything that came out of this man's mouth was negative. It was negative. He never thought that the child's behaviors, the way he interacted, some of the things that he knew he could never do, that as the child got older, he was being specifically groomed to deal with a certain personality type that that man would have never dreamt of dealing with. You see, some people, they grow up in a hood, right? Give you another example. They grow up in a hood and they're tough. They're hard. But then they turn around and they end up giving back to the hood. You know, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't go back and deal with the crippled, the blind, the crazy, the drug addicted, the alcohol addicted, the whores, the, you know, the pimps, the players, the hustlers, you know, you wouldn't do it. But a person who grew up in that type of atmosphere, who has a compassion, who went through much, they're going to be able to deal with those people in a way that maybe you and I just can't because we didn't go through as much. We may have went through some things, but not as much as that person who has a heart for those people have. You see, some folks will say, oh, I'm so sorry that you went through as much as you went through. But here's the catch. Here's the catch. Yeah, I, I mean, I wish there were some things that I hadn't gone through, too. But at the same time, though, I realized that it prepped me to deal with a certain type of individual. You see, whereas some people, I wish I could reach those folks. Let me tell you, you're not going to be able to reach everyone. You're not going to be able to because there's certain people that you're going to always lose because guess what? She don't sound like the way, you know, I would hope to, you know, deal with this person or that one. She don't act like the way, you know, people from my area act like I can't really connect with her because, you know, the way she talks, the way she walks, the way she preaches, whatever that I just, there's just something about her that I just can't, you know, relate to. But I can relate to this person over here because, you know, she came from my environment and she knows what it's like to grow up rich or something along those lines, right? So God has certain people for us based on what we've gone through, similarities, you know, um, the types of upbringing, what have you. But others are never going to be able to connect because they haven't gone through certain things. So let's say that you grew up in the environment where the youth was respected, where the youth was heard, where the youth were active in the communities and so forth. You know, there were a lot of positive individuals around the youth. It's going to be foreign to you to hear things like, and I'm going to give you real examples, to hear things like adults cursing at young people. Adults um, beating young people. I had cousins who were beat with extension cords. Okay. I heard their cries. Okay. To, it's going to be foreign to you to think that there are adults that would go so far as to sell their children so that they could get some drugs. And that sort of stuff was going on in certain parts of the community that I grew up in. Okay. Then you know, to have children have guns and knives and then the school having to put certain security measures in place to make sure that folks didn't, you know, stab somebody, shoot somebody. OK, toward the last year of school, that's what happened. OK. And so, you know, we were going through the metal detectors. And then, you know, there was this. um 
you know, this, this, this nastiness with some of these adults that didn't mind turning children out. And when I say that, I'm talking about, you know, putting them, you know, in some, I, I want to be very careful in how I say this because I have young people that listen, but just having them do some despicable acts. Okay. Um, you know, and, and, and just trying to get them to, uh, conform to their way of life so that they could be profitable to them so that they could be able to get them to do some things for them. Um, and some just so that they'll stay close to them, you know, for all the wrong reasons. So it is foreign to some folks to hear that sort of thing and they don't want to hear the truth. So let me just connect with someone, you know, who has a softer message, you know, who hasn't been through so much, who won't show me so many different things. Cause I don't, I mean, I've got, you know, a mind that tends to be, you know, very vivid, um, in its imaginations and it's just too much for me to deal with. And so for some people, that's how they are. Okay. And so when we question God about, you know, why did you have us around me, such selfish and, you know, arrogant and downright nasty individuals? And, you know, why did we have to know so much, you know, but at the same time, there's a reason for everything. And God wants us to be able to touch a certain type of person. He's called, you know, many, um, but he's chosen few and those that he has chosen they will be able to connect with you in a way that other folks may not be able to. You know, people in business talk about, you know, what is your niche? You got to find out your niche. OK, you know, that specific thing that you um, want to sell, right, um, of some type of product or maybe it's a talent or a service or something. But you've got to know what that is. And then this way, it's going to drive your passion to keep selling, to keep, you know, doing whatever it is that you want to do in business. Well, in God's kingdom business, you've got to know what your spiritual niche is. And if your calling is to talk to the young as well as the selfish, then you would know that there are some things that you would have to communicate based on what you've gone through in your youth, in addition to what you may be guilty of doing even now when it comes to selfish behavior, selfish motive, selfish gain, and try to um, work through all of those things. And then, of course, teach others not to do the same. Okay. The young and selfish are among us, and we see them at family events, of course. We see them at the workplaces. We see them in the churches. We see them when we are shopping, when we are, um, you know, just going about our day. The young wants some guidance, even when they don't say that that's what they want. They want some guidance because they know they don't know everything. And sometimes it gets a little bit scary in this world. Sometimes you don't know what decision to make. And, and as a young person, you trust an adult, you know, because you figure they have gone through much. Um, they know a bit about life. But when that adult is the wrong adult, an adult that is mentally troubled, an adult that has a lot going on with him or her, they're going to steer you in a direction where you'll say, this doesn't sound right. This doesn't look right. Like case in point, um, an adult who spoke to one of my sons and was saying some things that didn't make sense to him. And he came to me and he told me some of these things. And I said, he's not even supposed to talk to you about that sort of stuff. You see? Not in the way that he did it. Now, if he was going to teach you, that's one thing. But he came across as trying to be a friend, a buddy. That's not what my son needed. He needed to be told that right now is not the time, you know, to be, let's say, I'll just pull out a topic. Girls, you know, focused on girls. 
This is the time to be focused in on your schoolwork and trying to, you know, better yourself and being that one that can one day say, yes, I've accomplished this, 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 and this. I'm content right now. Now I'm ready for, you know, a future wife, not even a girlfriend, but a future wife. But those aren't the types of conversations that some of these elders have with the youth. Instead, they call themselves trying to befriend them by talking like them, by acting like them. And God did not call us to be that way. We've had our time of fun and games and, you know, flirting and being lustful and trying to, you know, attract this one and that one. Now it's time to teach and guide and instruct these young people not on things that um, are selfish and are beneficial for us, but things that are going to help them. You see, moving self out the way, stop being so selfish. What can I get from this young person? What can they do for me? You see, how am I going to be able to get some benefit out of this relationship with this young person? You got older men, and I've written many, many articles about this sort of thing, and I have a blog dedicated just to older men and younger women, okay? And it's dedicated to issues that the age gap relationships face, okay? You got some individuals that's looking at the young women as well as the young men as fountains of youth. And then you've got the young people looking up at the older uh, people as um, banks. <laughs> OK, They'll just be bold. You got some that are in those types of relationships. You give me what I want and I give you what, you know, I um you know, and I, and I give you, you know, what you want in return. And then, you know, we got some type of mutual arrangement going on here. And the Lord spoke to me and he said that there is a way to do things that's righteous and true, even in a relationship like that, when it is pure, but when it is not right, here's what it looks like, you know, so I show the good as well as the bad. I'm on tips, dating, older men, dot com, And no, it is not spiritual. Sometimes you got to talk to people in a way where it meets them right where they are. I did have a uh, Christian woman speak to me and wanted to know more about it. And so that's why I'm sharing it. Um, they've got to see all sides to, you know, what is going on uh, between the young and the selfish. That people who have selfish motives or don't mind uh, putting moral you know, character, um, you know, principles and so forth on the shelf and turning around and using and abusing young people and young people who are naive, who are gullible, are susceptible to being mistreated by adults, young people who don't stand up for themselves, young people who don't fight when they're being attacked. They are, you know, going to find themselves um, putting up with a lot. Young people who may not be strong enough to, you know, physically fight, but yet they can go and talk to someone about what's going on with them. You see, if they w truly want the help and then some are so fearful. And then of course we pray for those individuals who are just so fearful to open their mouths, to run away, to fight, to do anything, but just take it. And at some point that young person who may have once been weak, and couldn't do too much of anything is going to get bigger, is going to become stronger. And that's where the selfish people will turn up the mind control, will turn up the control, um, power and control methods. OK. What can a young what, what can a young person do right now who may be going through something like this? Well, first, they can pray. God has access and if you are one who is a spiritual person who believes in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you can lead that young person in prayer. You don't have to talk to them about their personal business, ask a bunch of questions and things like that. Because some of these young people are so mind controlled that they'll go back and they'll tell uh, someone, look, Auntie so-and-so is asking a bunch of questions. And meanwhile, it's like that's not what's going on here to try to, you know, hurt, you know, the parents and all of that. Um, what is taking place is 
trying to establish some type of relationship with a young person who you can clearly see is hurting spiritually, mentally, physically. But, you know, controlling adults are going to try to turn their daughters and sons away from those who sincerely care, who sincerely love. It turns some people off because they don't like that caring, that loving, that kind, that considerate individual around them. Because they also know that those are children of light and will expose them on their errors. So a person who doesn't want to be rebuked, doesn't want to be corrected, they're going to try to keep all of their business right at home. And they're going to scold and they're going to be very angry with the young people who open up their mouths. I was one of them who opened up my mouth, though. And I told adults about some things that I felt wasn't right. And those adults guided me on what was right. And they told me, no, that's not right. You being treated that way. They told me that what was said to you, that was incorrect. And whoever told you that, you know, because sometimes you're too scared to tell a name as a young person, right? So whoever told you that, they're wrong. You see, so when you open up your mouth, and even as an adult, when you open up your mouth and you ask questions of those who know a bit more than you, then you can be on the fast track to getting the necessary information that you need to do what is right and not continue to perpetuate, you know, dark things, ugly things, evil things, things that would, you know, make people's stomach churn. But some people have faulty reasoning, faulty logic. They have, you know, faulty um, ideas. Um, they have faulty instruction. They got a lot of stuff going on that's not right. And so they lead these young people into this, it's okay, it's all right type of mentality. And then when the young person ends up trying the wrong person, you know, with some of their messed up programming, that wrong person might hurt them bad. I don't know where you got this sort of behavior, but uh, -uh you can't bring that over here, you know. So take a moment to pray for the young as well as the selfish. And when you recognize some things that are not right, you check the individual right on the spot. In other words, you speak up and you tell them, listen, this isn't right, you know. And then you find out the source of the information if they w are willing to give you that. And if you can't get the information, at least reiterate, once again, this is wrong. You know, we don't act this way in my household or this isn't what we do here at this church or at this workplace. You know, um, I'm sorry that, you know, you experience what you experience, but this isn't the time. This isn't the place, you see. And if they know right from wrong, then that will elimin eliminate a lot of confusion in the future. But being selfish and being concerned about, you know, one's uh, self and, you know, only oneself. Well, that's definitely ungodly. That's wicked. That's unrighteous. And God will definitely deal with those individuals who are like this. Well, I thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen to just a bit of wisdom today. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Please subscribe if you, if you haven't already. And also this channel welcomes donations. So we appreciate uh, your support. Well, to God be the glory. Have a wonderful day.